I fucked up. What a idiot! Oh, what a loser! My initial excitement for the Masters of the Air show on Apple TV has turned to disappointment. It's not awful, and it definitely has some cool visuals, but I don't feel the excitement for new episode releases. The progression in characters and stories since the first two episodes has not been what I hoped. Making a show that I thought had really good potential to fizzle out. Let's start with the issue of story structure. Telling the story of the Allied bombing campaign from the perspective of one specific bomber group is inherently difficult. Frontline infantrymen are the war stories we are used to seeing, and there's a reason for that. And that's because plot development and story can easily follow along on a path of progress. For example, look at Band of Brothers. The show starts in basic training, then goes to their jump into France for the Normandy invasions, then the fight in the Netherlands and Belgium, and then finally they reach Germany. The show has a distinct path it can follow, the ultimate goal being Berlin, to end the war. So every episode can move the characters closer and closer to that objective, while fleshing out the characters' stories and personalities. However, the air campaign doesn't have that luxury. The bombers didn't take and hold ground from the enemy. They simply go on their mission, drop their bomb load on the target, then go home. It's not conducive to good story progress. It feels repetitive. And I don't think Masters of the Air ever figured out how to get over that inherent plot issue. If anything, it felt like the early episodes hyper-focused on each mission and the build up to them. Then the later episodes just gloss over whole missions. A lot of the missions happen off screen and that hurts because the action of the missions were the best thing this show had going for it. The other inherent issue with telling the story of one specific bomber group is that you don't have a large pool of real characters to draw from. Band of Brothers followed Easy Company, which obviously did lose men, but a solid core made it from beginning to end. So in that series, you got to follow along and grow with them. The bomber groups of World War II took heavy casualties, and so they had plenty of turnover and personnel. This is showcased in Masters of the Air, but the problem is that we are briefly introduced to characters, then boom, they're gone. It's hard to form attachments when people are cycling in and out so quickly. It makes matters even worse when characters die off screen. The show does that with several characters. And without seeing the dramatic end of a character, it's hard to even remember who they were. Speaking of off screen deaths, the way they handled Buck's death is absolutely criminal. When he quote dies, we don't get to see that mission. We only find out when his plane doesn't come back from a raid and are only told about it by other pilots who say they saw him get shot down. I didn't believe for a second that he was actually dead. He's the main fucking character. He's not going to be written off by a line of dialogue. And because of that undramatic setup, the ultimate payoff of Buck and Bucky being reunited at a prisoner camp feels like it falls short. I feel like that could have been a really powerful moment too. That's what really sucks. The wasted potential. We should have seen the mission Buck crashed and saw his perspective as the plane fell to pieces, leaving us in wonder whether he made it out in time. Then, when the two friends reunited, it would have been exciting and fulfilling. That's where my biggest complaint of this show is. Too much tell and not enough show. After the first several episodes, when we see every mission, it slows down dramatically, to only seeing a few here and there. The show then pivots to just straight up telling us what happened with voiceover or character dialogue. Two examples of the down pilots escape from being stuck behind enemy lines and their journey to return to England and Major Rosenthal's 25 mission accomplishment. During episode 3, we see the perspective of a bomber crewman after crash landing in Belgium and how the Belgium and French resistances are going to help him get home. I thought this story thread was cool and was excited to see how it would be fleshed out over the course of the season. With the ultimate payoff of after a long perilous journey, he makes it home safely. Nope, didn't get that. Got maybe one episode of him in a tense situation on a train in France. Then in episode 7, voiceover at the beginning of the episode just glosses over it to tell us they made it back. Like, how the fuck did they make it back from Paris to England? Did they swim? Did they dig a fucking tunnel? Who knows? And the series certainly doesn't care enough to show you. Ah, uh, no, I don't really feel like it. Then there's Major Rosenthal's 25 mission accomplishment. Major Rosenthal is introduced in episode 5 as commanding the sole returning B-17 after a deadly mission. That same mission is the one where Bucky gets shot down. So at that point, Rosenthal is now the main flying character, since both Buck and Bucky's stories are shifted to their survival in a POW camp, which isn't a bad idea per se, but I wish we would have seen somewhat more of him before he was thrust in essentially the main character role. But at least the focus is on him for episode 6, where things really go wrong is at the start of episode 7, when the narrator just casually says he's at 24 missions, and only needs to complete one more mission to be allowed to go home. 
historically accurate, sure. But my question is, how are we as viewers supposed to connect with how truly difficult it was to fly 25 missions without dying when we just skip over 23 missions? We see his first, then we see his 25th, with nothing in between. It doesn't feel like a perilous journey to 25, because he makes it there in the course of an episode. A couple more examples are the air operations for the lead up to the Normandy invasion, as well as the Red Tails. They talk about the planning for D-Day and show Major Crosby working long hours to plan those attacks out, but we don't actually see those attacks or see their effect on the German army in France. As well with the Red Tails, we really only get to see two missions of theirs. And the second one is the one they get shot down in. We don't get a sense of how good of pilots they were. They are introduced, then shot down within 20 minutes of each other in the same episode. The series struggles mightily with weight. It doesn't have any idea of how to build things up so the viewer feels an investment. An example of this is the introduction of the P-51 Mustang. You could argue the introduction of that plane was the single most important aspect of the air campaign. But is it built up at all? No, of course not. Why would it be? In episode 7, it is just shoehorned in there. And I mean really jammed in there, without any build up or context. One mission they take heavy casualties, off screen of course. Then as Rosenthal is going for his 25th mission, in the middle of the flight, the narrator just says, now we have the P-51 Mustang. Then they fly in out of nowhere. And all the B-17s go hit their targets, no problems, no casualties. Our chances of defeating the Luftwaffe were increased by the introduction of the P-51 Mustang. I was in literal shock at how little buildup they provided. I was so excited for how they'd showcase the P-51 Mustang. And to just throw it in there as part of narration was so incredibly dumb. God. Damn it! Also in episode seven, they just completely gave up on historical accuracy. Yeah, I can't do this. The show was doing a pretty good job in that department up until then. They showcased real missions like Bremen or Regensburg. As well, the Norton bomb site was mentioned, and they even explained the difference between the British and American strategies of area versus precision bombing. Then episode seven happened, and they ended it by saying Doolittle was changing the air campaign strategy to using B-17s as bait so the American fighters could shoot down the German planes and gain air superiority for the invasion of France. Get the fuck out of here. They were not using B-17s as bait to destroy the Luftwaffe. I'm sorry, I'm allergic to bullshit. The change in strategy was actually about shifting from targets that broadly affected the German war effort, like ball bearing plants or industrial centers that were in Germany, to hitting targets in support of the eventual Allied invasion of France. That meant targeting rail and road networks or communication centers in France. They went from strategic missions to tactical support ones. They were not fucking bait for fighter battles. The real reason the Luftwaffe was destroyed, and a complete non-factor in the Normandy invasion, was their fuel supply had been completely destroyed. Allied bombers crippled German oil capacity, and that grounded their fighters. As well, the attacks on German production areas hurt German plane manufacturing. The Allies could put more and better planes in the air than the Luftwaffe could by the summer of 1944. The show wanted to change history so it could have a cool soundbite at the end of episode 7. Ultimately, it didn't even mean anything to the plot of the series though. In the next episode, B-17s aren't used as bait at all, and everyone seems to have just forgotten about that plan. Feels like the writers just completely forgot about that setup. I have no other way to explain it. Why? Cause fuck them, that's why. Alright, one last gripe. I feel bad for any British people who watch this show, because your air contribution to the war effort is completely erased in this series. Look, I get this is an American show telling a primarily American story, but the fact that the only British air contribution we see is some condescending British airman mocking the American daylight bombing strategy, only to get knocked out in one punch is such a travesty. I get showing the natural animosity between the two forces, but the Royal Air Force fought valiantly for six years to help defeat Nazi Germany. So it feels like a big miss not to include them contributing positively to the air campaign. Okay, enough of what I hated. I'm tired of being negative on this show. It's not that bad. They're not that bad. For the most part, I did enjoy watching this series, much better than most of the shit that is out there now. To me, the visuals are pretty stunning, especially at the beginning of the series when we actually get to see bombing runs. It's hard to find modern visual representations of the World War II bombing campaign. And this show did deliver that. And I'm thankful to finally get to see a real representation of the strategic bombing campaign. I also like that they at least tried to stay accurate to history for the most part. 
and tried to fit their narrative along real human stories. They could have just made up characters, but it did seem like they genuinely wanted to tell real World War II stories. So for that, I do gotta give them a little bit of the tip of the cap. It's incredibly valuable to keep telling those real stories as generations pass. All right, let's get closer to wrapping this bitch up. It's very easy in this day and age to criticize. It's much harder to offer your own constructive criticism. So what would I do if I was given the reins of this series? How would I differ in direction? To me, I would have done two main stories at once. One would follow a B-17 pilot, and the other his brother, or friend, who's a fighter pilot. Now granted, for this to work, it would have to deviate from the traditional setup of real stories and blend into some more fictional World War II, but I feel like they could have taken two real World War II pilot stories, one of a B-17 and the other of a fighter pilot, and just made them brothers or friends in order to connect the two plot threads. I think the dynamic of bomber and fighter pilots in the same series would have balanced each other out well. You have tactical as well as strategic. The bomber stories could stay largely the same, but the fighter stories could have more closely followed the campaigns in Africa, Italy, and France. I really believe having fighter pilot stories told since the beginning would have added a much needed dynamic. We could have seen dogfights with Luftwaffe airmen, as well how those planes operated in close support with ground troops. Like I said, this would have made the show deviate from the focus of one main bomber group. But in a way, the Pacific show did this same thing. That followed three different groups of people within the same marine division. Granted, it was all the same division, but all of their stories were pretty disconnected. So I think my fighter pilot idea could have worked along the same lines. As well, I think the show should have started in flight school. Like how Band of Brothers started in basic training. Give us one episode to get to know who is who, before we see them thrust into the chaos of combat. Give us a reason to connect with these characters. I think they should have expanded the Red Tail storyline as well. It felt like in the actual Masters of the Air show, the Red Tails were just kind of thrust in there. I mean, they didn't show up until episode 8. And so it was hard to get to know them in only two episodes. In my version, even if their story was only supplemental and sprinkled in here and there in episodes, until a later episode that could be fully devoted to their missions. Band of Brothers did that a lot. Have side characters who stayed on the edges, and then got a full episode devoted to them. And finally, like I said earlier, add some British pilot perspective, at least as side characters, so we can shed some light on their contributions. I feel like ultimately, where this show lost its way was when it shifted the focus onto Major Crosby's stories. Him and the other operational leader's perspective just was not interesting. Instead of going on missions and seeing the peril, we saw them stand at a tower waiting for missions to return. That's when the series really started relying on tell instead of show. And that's not why we watch shows. We want to see, not be told. But it's a moot point now. They took a decade to make it, so I expected fireworks. And unfortunately, that's not what I got. I won't say this show is bad or a waste of time. It definitely wastes opportunities, and fizzles out quickly, leaving you feeling, I'd say, unsatisfied, in my opinion. So I think if it comes down to it, I would have to rate this a 6 out of 10, maybe a 5. I do really appreciate a lot of the visuals. The visual of all the ships and planes used on D-Day is pretty stunning, but that is only 3 seconds. Anyway, I hope they keep making historically focused movies and shows, because I still do get an excitement for them that other genres just can't elicit for me. I'll see you all again after the next historic movie or TV show comes out that I know anything about. Well, about time for me to be hitting the old dusty trail.